We're gonna be doing a lot of weird tests to accessories today. This Binbach battery strap has been the most requested battery strap for me to test out since the Quest 3 launched. And it's because a lot of you out there have said that this is one of the only ones that will not only keep your Quest charged up while you're playing, it'll actually juice it up during play. There's this edition that's $55, comes with a strap and one battery. There is a $100 edition that comes with a second battery and a dock for both of them. Some interesting features about it. Obviously, it's an Elite style strap. You can tip the front up, which I like that Elites do that. I've spent a couple weeks with this thing now, so I've really gotten to test it. And one of the funny things about it, if you do want to store a battery on it, but you don't want it to be running at that time, they make it so you can flip this around and it hooks right back on. With the Quest 2 one, when I tried that, I was like, that seems like a bad idea because you might put it on wrong. But people are like, no, that's a feature. So then you can put it on the other way if you don't want to use it. I guess that might come in handy for some people, but it does lead to some confusion. Sometimes if you put it on wrong, you got to make sure it does that beep. Otherwise you may not have it on there. But speaking of beeps, that's my biggest problem with this battery strap so far. And as you can see here in this clip, sometimes it'll beep like the Quest is charging. It's not this beep, it's the Quest side beep, and it'll happen every few seconds. And it's really distracting while you're playing. But enough of you out there recommended this that I do hope this is just one faulty one. I reached out to Ben Bach, I told them all about it. They said they were looking into it with their engineers. So watch for a follow-up on this. If we get another one, maybe they'll send us the kit with a double and we can try it out. But it's comfy for an elite strap. It feels good, I like it. Seems like it's pretty durable, yeah? But that was killing it for me the whole time I was using it. I like that beep. But the other one, the <laughs> over and over inside the Quest, driving me nuts. Hopefully there will be some follow up on this one with all of you, but let me know in the comments if you did get one and you have never had that issue and it's just me. But for now, I'm not gonna leave a link for this yet until we can confirm that it's just one faulty one. And hopefully it's not a widespread issue between more of them because it was super annoying. We have got a dropship piece of crap head strap. A word to accessory manufacturers, dropshippers, people out there. If your product is so cheaply dropshipped that it doesn't even have a brand name anywhere on it, maybe make sure there's some sort of branding. Ooh, yeah. Listen to that. With the biggest rear head pad I've ever seen. It's too big, actually. I'll show you why. Because not only is it huge, it's not flexible. It's like hard plastic. I do think the uh, carbon fiber top strap is kind of a fun detail. It's a little, little pretty. Rickety. Oh gosh, do we even want to bend test this? I'm kind of scared. Oh. It didn't snap, it just stays there. Look at that. I've never seen one do that before, actually. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Problem with this one in testing, when you have this, it's so big on the back of your head that it actually limits you from tilting your head up because it starts jamming you in the neck back here. It's just too huge. And it's not really shaped like a human skull in any way to where there's never a time the whole thing is touching your head. It's like, there's always a huge space here and a space here. It's just bad. This is bad. I do like that you can bend it though and just leave it there. That's kind of fun. Look at that. You can you can make any kind of strap you want out of it. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, it's getting worse though. It's gonna it's gonna break. It even tells you it's a replaceable head strap because it's replaceable garbage. We searched all over Amazon. I'm gonna try again and see if maybe I can find you something in the end. But like even the name is just SEO keywords. VR, Oculus, Quest 3, Accessories, Grip, VR, Shell, Cover, Face Cover. Nowhere in there can I find a brand name. So I'll do some more hunting before this video comes out and maybe there'll be a pop-up here on what it is so you know who to avoid at least. Definitely do not recommend, do not pass go. Blue controller grips. After a lot of testing, I've gotta say, these are the most comfortable grips that you'll see of the Roundup today. Spoiler alert. They made holes in them so that the lights, the infrared lights would all be showing here, which is a nice touch. Only one you still see that was missing, newer grips have been good about leaving a hole for that rear light here, which this one isn't gonna do that. The hand strap, even though it's got the buckle up here, you don't feel that. It feels comfortable the whole time. And I was comparing a lot of them one to one. I'd have one on each hand, one on the other. And every time I just wanted to keep this set on. So I will say, they're decent. I'm not gonna recommend them. I wouldn't leave a link just cause it's missing that one hole for the light. But if you were someone who got these for some reason or you really wanted this colored set, they're gonna work actually pretty well. I never had them slipping. They actually really hold on to the controller nicely because of the way they're built. They go all around the buttons. They feel good in hand. The strap, although it's kind of cheap, it's flexible pleather. So it feels good on your hand. I was never having it cut in. I was never having any issues. It never got the grip button stuck or the trigger stuck on it. It stayed in place. Overall, they're actually decent, but 
Not my forte. I'm still using these $9 flexible grips that just hook directly on the controller, at least until I find something better, something I like more. But every time I have these on and I'm testing other ones, I just always come back to these. I love the way it feels in your hand, the way the controller just grips onto you really well. This is the one I'll leave a link to in the description. But these are fine. If you got these and you came here and you're wondering what I thought of them, they're fine. Destech CB4 controller grips, textured silicone, kind of feels like alligator skin or something on there. Hand straps, you can let go of them. Very thin on the hand strap, kind of an odd decision here. I feel like the thicker ones always do better, at least for comfort, but I was thinking maybe it makes sense because with newer hand straps, they are trying not to cover so much of your hands since the Quest is always trying to track your hands and your controller simultaneously. The grips seem to fare okay at first in testing, but as I went on and got in Beat Saber more and more, this edge right here, as you can see, as you grip it tight, wants to start to slip. And and beyond that, there's just not really a lot. It's kind of hanging on around the edge, but I kept finding that this thing was starting to come down and after a good while, it would start to pull down on your trigger and you'd end up reaching down and kind of having to fix it. If you're playing gentle games, easy VR, you'd probably never run into that with these, but if you're playing Beat Saber and you're really going for it, it's gonna start to slip down and off. It's a problem. No go. Or zero front cover and camera glass lens cover combo. These come with tempered glass screen protectors to add an extra layer of protection similar to what you do with a phone camera. And then they slip right off when you go to touch them. In theory, you could try and get these on here and let them cure for like 24 hours and don't touch anything. But the fact that like, even when you're putting them on, they don't feel sticky at all. Like they were somehow stuck to this piece of plastic when they came in the package, but it's really lacking in stickiness. And by the time you slide it around or move around at all, it's like, oh, that thing's just gonna come off there. I've actually had one sitting on here for quite a while now on the front. And yeah, I mean, it's taking no pressure or touch to get rid of that, so. That's not great, but maybe you bought it just for this, which, why would you? I feel like this whole video is just kind of derailing it. Like, this should be the worst accessories on Quest video. Actually, this should not be a full review of a bunch of accessories. But let's give this a shot. As if there wasn't already enough silicone to cover your Quest in. Now, in theory, if the glass protectors had actually seated on and worked, we would have quite a bit of coverage on here now. Someone explain to me, how is it that first piece of crap silicone cover thing we got for the Quest 3 was by far the best one? out of all of them. And it was also, in my mind, a hunk of junk. These ones feel like they just didn't even use a mold. They just kind of like eyeballed, oh, that's what a Quest 3 looks like. Cause you just can't get them to seat. Like that first one had enough of a lip. Remember it gripped onto the edge. This one right now, the problem is I've got all this slack here. There's not really anything you can do about it. Cause it feels like this hole wasn't cut back far enough. Like to get the slack to come in, I'd have to push this against here and create force. So I guess you could just like try and leave it hanging out. No, no matter what, it's just flopping all around. Gosh, if I recommend a single accessory today, I'm gonna be happy at this rate, because this sucks. No or zero kit. I told you we'd be back to talk about silicone covers that don't work as well. This one I ordered it because it was different and I was like, oh, this looks like maybe it'll have some ventilation on it, you know, make it a little more breathable on your face. And it does exactly that. And you don't really feel those little holes. Like you can, you can tell they're there, but they don't really like distract or bother you. The problem comes in when you're playing active and sweaty games, the sweat just goes right through these holes, soaks inside of there. And then it's not really that breathable for the sweat to come back out. So you end up soaking this pad and it gets behind the silicone in here and you're trapping who knows how much bacteria and grossness in there. So if you're gonna get a silicone cover, go full silicone, don't get breathing holes. If you really needed breathability, they could make ones that had like thicker sections so it created some airflow space, but you don't want holes in the silicone over a soft cloth cover, letting all that sweat and bacteria in. It's just gross. Silicone sleeve, clear-ish silicone, fake carbon fiber hand straps, let go of grips. Pretty quickly in testing, I was not in love with these ones compared to others. So this fake carbon fiber here, it has sharp edges on each side and you notice that if this moves, it all starts digging into your hand. Like you can even see, I think that just left a line there. Like that was happening while I was playing. I kept finding myself adjusting this thing and trying to find the sweet spot. Interestingly though, this covers up some of the infrared lights a little bit and yet it didn't have any problems with tracking at all. It reminded me of those Kiwi tracking ring protectors that we had before, it saw the lights right through them. So even the light down here that is technically covered by silicone was still visible through. But the biggest killer to these grips was when you were really playing and going for a while, they'd start to slip a little bit. So your grip button should be able to move freely. But as this pulled down just a little bit, your grip button would slip behind it. And then I found my grip button stuck when I was trying to throw things in a game and I couldn't do it anymore. We got a lot of people trying to develop grips and some of them are closer than others. These are still my go-tos. These are what's gonna have a link in the description to these ones because I'm like, and these ones a lot the more I use them and the more I test other ones even more I'm liking these sadly no go 
Plastic protective cover for your Quest. When I first got this out and got it on before testing, I was like, oh, that's weird. Because normally what these will have is they'll have a little bit of a hook at the edge on each side and it'll kind of hook on. And actually sometimes it's freaky because you don't really know how to get them back off. This one doesn't have that at all. The edge just comes right up to the edge. And then I saw those little tabs and I was like, oh, it's got adhesive in there and you have to unhook those and then adhesive it on. Those are just little bits of padding crap to help hold it in place. That's not a peel offable sticker. That was just like cotton padding to help tighten the whole thing down, I guess. Either that or their adhesive is very crap and is just peeling off with it. It's not leaving anything sticky there to help. It's not hanging on great at all. I do like this idea though, because it's actually thick enough that it could protect it in a slight fall up here. You've got the plastic sticking out far enough. But the fact the whole thing, like the, you have this on and when people go to take the heads off, a lot of times they try and grab here and they're like, grabbing if they grab them the sides they're okay but this thing just it just comes right off it just flaps right on and off and of course anything like this you're risking a bit more with the thermals as you'll see here but ultimately if this thing hung on i'd be a little bit more like oh maybe this is good but it just doesn't hold on at all it just sits there no no when you get a 10-in-1 kit, in my mind, at least most of the accessories should be worth it or worth saving. We'll just start with this guy. Front cover here, that once it is on and seated, it doesn't have that same kind of lip the last one did to where this thing just likes to move all around. And it can end up totally like that while you're playing it. They make it like it's a feature. They're like, oh, it's got all this ventilation back here with all these little knobs. But because of that, the silicone never really grips on. And you find that when you're using it, it's all over the place and nothing is really holding it in place. Between that and the heat issues I've already talked about with these things just being a potential hazard, especially if they're able to move around and cover up your vents on them, that's a no-go. They tried, they did better. They made a little bit of a nub out here to kind of try to protect these, but still, when you put this thing down, you hear the thud of that lens hitting first. Like if you're really gonna make a cover like this, this needs to at least stick out far enough to offer a little protection. You tried here, I'll give you credit, but the floppiness of it is really the problem. One accessory down, silicone facial interface cover. Had some promise, it looked good, but when you put this on, you notice how my voice changes a little bit? These things, they're so thick back here that they basically just pinch your nostrils, you know, like you did when you were a kid to talk weird. And you're doing that the whole time you're playing VR, so you're having a hard time breathing. That right there, the two major things, and I mean, it comes with a little air blower and these awful lens covers. Definitely not worth it. The only thing is, I mean, you might keep the, the cleaning cloth and like the little lens duster thing, like, but the main reason you're buying it would probably be these, and that right there kills it enough that I'm just gonna say this 10 in one, definitely not worth it, would not recommend. Combo pack comes with a lens cover and a silicone face cover, goes over the stock interfaces. We've talked about these in a couple videos now. I prefer the feeling of silicone on my face versus the cloth. It doesn't soak up sweat. The flip side of that though is the sweat will just roll right down all over your face and cover your face. There's tons of these kinds of silicone covers and most of them are pretty much created equal. This one in particular has a little bit thicker silicone. It's nice. There's tons of them on Amazon. So I'll leave a link in the description to the silicone covers that I found that I like if you really want one of these. Personally, I'm still waiting for a better facial interface that might use pleather or something that's not quite so slippery as silicone. But if you don't have one of these already and you like the feeling, especially if you had a Quest 2 when they recalled that one and you got the silicone cover, you like that, it's good. A lot of things come with these random lens covers. If you're really gonna be taking your Quest outside and you're worried about like sunlight getting into it, pretty much any of them are gonna fit in there and cover up your lenses and do their job. The problem is most of them are also going to activate the sensor back here and they even made, some of them make cutouts that come like that, but the sensor's so low now on the Quest 3 versus the Quest 2, it's pretty much always gonna activate it. So if you're ever gonna use one of these, you need to turn the Quest fully off first, especially if you're gonna put it away in a case where that heat's just gonna be sweltering if it keeps on running in there. Personally, I don't really use these but if you're someone that wants one, it happens to come in this kit with this. But you're just gonna have to use a lot of extra caution. Like I've said, you don't wanna leave this, have it draining your battery or worse, getting your headset hot when it's in a confined space. But any silicone cover at this point pretty much is good. Three rounds of accessories. And now I'm gonna tell you real quick which ones I'm still using of all of them. I'm liking these grips. There will now start being in each video rolling forward a whole section in the description of my Quest 3 setup. And it's gonna have all my favorite accessories right now. These grips so far are on there. 
I am looking forward to trying Meta's own version of these, but they still haven't sent them. I am rocking the M3 Pro, although as we've talked about, the batteries don't last nearly as long as the Quest 2, but I seem to have figured out which batteries it is of mine are draining too fast. And so most of them give me about an hour, sometimes a little bit more extra. Of course, the Mr. Task cat ears, those are probably the most divisive accessory I own. Every, most people in the comments are like, I love them. And every once in a while I get those people like, what are you doing? My recommendation for most people is still the stock facial interface with a silicone cover on it. If you want something different, I am using a horrible, awful facial interface that I can't recommend to anybody, but it just happens to work for me. It gives me a little bit more field of view. And the fact that I'm using the M3 means how uncomfortable it is. I don't notice because it's hovering in front of my face. It's not actually pushing on there. I don't really want to leave a link to that one because I don't like it. I do like the Avica case, but I did find with my old Bobo VR case, I could still get it closed even with the ears on. I'm probably going to break a set of ears at some point because of that, but it all fits. So I'm still using the Bobo VR C2 case. So full set of links in the description, anything that I did like from this one, although it's not much today, these accessories were kind of crap. And then of course, what I am using from the previous ones in my full setup there. So check that out if you want to get something. Thanks again for hanging out. These accessory roundups have been really fun. Watch out for more and I'll see you in another reality.